Hi, I'm Steve Taylor. I'm the registered dietitian for 3D Muscle Journey, and I'm also a coach for people who want to make sustainable behavior changes. Optimizing your digestive health, improving digestive functioning, that's a topic that comes up a lot, and it's something that regardless of what your physique goals are, it can have a huge impact on the quality of your life. So I wanted to make a quick video to kind of outline some different strategies and tools you can use if and when you experience digestion issues. I also wrote a similar article on this topic, which I will link in the description box below. So this is my disclaimer so I don't get sued. This video is not intended to replace a consultation with a qualified healthcare professional. If you are experiencing gastrointestinal discomfort, feel free to give these strategies a try. However, use your own judgment and seek professional help if needed. So the first thing I want to touch on is gluten and dairy. And I start here because this is where most people tend to start. And don't get me wrong, consuming gluten and dairy can cause and does cause adverse and sometimes damaging effects in certain individuals. However, the key word is certain individuals. So if you have a known food allergy or other food sensitivity, then you already know to avoid these things. If you don't, then trying to identify potential allergies or other potential sensitivities is where you are. So there are a variety of different ways you can see if your body reacts adversely to gluten, dairy, or other foodstuffs. However, a good place to start is with asking these questions. Do I have probable cause to think that it is X which is causing my issues? Have I ever experienced issues with, from ingesting X before? Starting with asking these questions can stop you from potentially cutting out foods that don't actually need to be cut out and allow you to find the true source of your digestive discomfort faster. Also, depending on how you answer these questions, you may want to try some of the following strategies first or at the very least see a physician or someone who has expertise in these areas to help you assess your theory. The first thing I want to look at is fiber. I'm going to summarize the main points on fiber and digestive health here because I want to keep this video fairly short. However, if you want to read on fiber and digestive health in greater detail, I wrote an article titled Fiber and Weight Loss, which I will link in the description box below. So what exactly is fiber? In short, it's an indigestible carbohydrate of which there are two types, soluble and insoluble fiber. Again, if you want to read about these in greater detail, where you can find them, where you can find each type and how it acts inside your body, check out the article linked below in the description box. So too much and too little fiber are relative terms. And what I mean by this is, let's say somebody is supposed to consume 38 grams of fiber per day, but they're currently only consuming 10 grams. If they jump from 10 grams straight up to that 38 grams, this can cause issues even though they are now technically consuming the amount of fiber they should be. So if you are going to increase your fiber intake, do so gradually over time. Do not increase your fiber intake too much too quickly. Give your body time to acclimate to, those new, to this new level of higher fiber intake. Some rough guidelines for total daily fiber intake are 38 grams per day for most men, 25 grams per day for most women, 14 grams per thousand calories consumed, and then obviously these are guidelines and should be adjusted when necessary to fit the individual. The next thing I want to look at is fluid intake, and consuming an adequate amount of fluids is one of the most overlooked nutritional variables out there, and I think that's because it's become such common knowledge that we take it a bit for granted. You hear a lot about protein, fat, carbs, and even the talk of micronutrients and their importance is on the rise now, but very rarely do we hear about the importance of consuming enough fluids. Understanding the relationship between fluid intake and performance was something that I didn't experience firsthand until I moved to Los Angeles two years ago. Up until that point, I'd always trained in a controlled environment with air conditioning and heating. When I moved here, I started training at the Gold's Gym in Venice where there's not that and it's just, it's open and they just have fans for circulation. And during the summer, it gets really hot, and especially with all the people in there. And I noticed that like my both my my absolute strength and my endurance during my workouts would start to like be dramatically affected if I wasn't consciously consuming fluids during my training. So I started bringing either getting like Powerade zeros or just making a conscious effort to consume more water during my training sessions. And there was a huge improvement in my performance in the gym. So not only is adequate hydration important for performance, but it's also important for overall health. 
Consuming enough fluids helps your body, your digestive system, to move solids through the digestive tract. Also, if you are consuming a high fiber diet, your body needs this extra water to process the higher amounts of fiber to prevent constipation. To achieve an adequate fluid intake, many people find it helpful to front load fluids in their day. So either in the morning when they first wake up or during the first part of their day and or to condition the habit of having a beverage with each meal. So how much fluid should you consume in a day? Many factors, including your activity level, your climate, your training status, training status, your health status, any medications you're taking, etc., all these things affect your fluid needs on a daily basis. In fact, even your fluid needs change on a daily basis. Every day your fluid needs are slightly different. So to condense everything into a few simple concepts, number one, let thirst and urine color be your guides. So here is a urine color chart. Obviously, this chart has a lot of limitations to it, but I wanted to include at least something that fur further elaborates on the statement, let thirst and urine color be your guides, because that's by itself, that's pretty vague. If you want to look at this chart a bit closer, you can pause the video here. Just remember that if you're using any kind of a vitamin supplement, this can alter the color of your urine, so making this chart inapplicable to your situation. And also note that depending on the settings and calibration of your monitor, that can alter what you're seeing on your screen right now, making this chart inapplicable. So like I said, there's a lot of limitations to this chart, but I wanted to include at least something in here. And the current adequate intake for total water, so meaning water consumed through food, through drinking water, through other beverages such as coffee, juice, milk, etc., is 3.7 liters per day for most men and 2.7 liters per day for most women. These are recommendations for the general population, not athletes, so how and where you train will affect your fluid requirements. And then one additional tip I wanted to mention regarding fluids before we moved on was hot liquids. So drinking hot liquids can help to promote bowel movements. It doesn't have to be coffee, hot tea, water, and other beverages also work. Another area I want to look at are our daily patterns, so how we do things, how we structure our day. These areas are often overlooked, but one or two simple changes here can make a huge difference. So the first one is your morning routine. So how do you wake up in the morning? Do you start your day relaxed or do you rush around frantically all morning to avoid being late? Adjusting how you start your day is a simple yet very effective fix for many GI issues. Meal frequency. So even though this might not matter much for fat loss itself, it can matter for your digestive system. Regardless if you're gaining, maintaining, or cutting, large meals either in calories or food volume can cause GI distress. So increasing the number of meals per day and your meal frequency can be a simple strategy for alleviating GI distress. Many people find that establishing a semi-structured eating routine helps to promote consistent bowel movements. Another daily pattern that can affect your digestive system functioning is your activity level. Many people find that if their activity level drops too low, they start to experience negative effects in their GI functioning. So this is similar to meal frequency and the fact that even if you might not need Act like more daily activity or more cardio for fat loss, it, increasing your activity during the day may help with your GI functioning. And there are a lot of ways you can do this. One easy way that I help some of my clients do this is I have them use a pedometer to track their steps. And if we notice that their step count is really low, either because of their job or just their overall lifestyle, we'll set a goal, a step goal for them to hit moving forward just to help them increase their activity level during the day. Regardless of what your current strength and physique goals are, if you're experiencing GI discomfort and your activity level is very low due to either your job or your lifestyle, consider increasing your level of activity during the day to see if this helps with your GI functioning. And the last thing I want to touch on in this video is sugar alcohol. All of these are types of sugar alcohol. For some people, consuming sugar alcohol causes digestive discomfort and the reason that I wanted to touch on it in this video is the fact that if someone isn't aware that this can cause digestive discomfort, they wouldn't even think to examine this variable in their diet. So the amount that someone can tolerate, it's always on an individual basis. So trial and error will help you determine the amount that you can comfortably consume. 
If you do have a low tolerance, eating foods that contain sugar alcohol with other foods versus on an empty stomach can help reduce some of the negative effects. And then just be aware that many diet foods contain sugar alcohols. Of course, this isn't everything that affects your digestive health. However, it is a great list to start from. If you are experiencing GI discomfort, examining these variables in your life and then altering them if necessary can make a big difference in how you feel throughout the day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.